What I like about all these methods right here is the fact that you could really think outside the box. I mean, if I just was to offset this a little bit and then take and combine these together. Okay, what happens if I went in here and say, let's say duplicate this. Well, let's do it in such a way that we can duplicate with transform. Okay. In this case, I duplicated it. I'm offsetting it a little bit. And then I'm going to hit G on the keyboard. And over and over again, this part is going to just duplicate itself. And sure, this is very high poly, but it's, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, I didn't plan on, but I just want to show you that you know, learning how to make weird shaped parts is very important. Oftentimes I get students that are like, well, why are we learning all this stuff? Why are we learning little parts and how to kind of uh, make oddball shapes? It's important because in most cases with modeling, everything's so boring um, as far as, you know, it's so cliche. Squares go into squares, round parts go into round parts. But when you can produce something that's just a little outside the box on your model, it's so cool looking <laughs> because you don't see it very often. So in this case, I'm going to show you that, you know, all this stuff adds up in the end. I can like combine this together. And I could choose things that start warping this stuff. And we're going to cover these things a little bit more in the previous or in the next lessons. But for right now, I'm going to show you one that's kind of one I use all the time is lattice. Another one, and this is under animation by the way. But I'm going to show you nonlinear bend. Okay, this will help you out a little bit. With nonlinear bend, what it does it adds this wire, okay? And this wire is in control of the entire mesh. If I need to make this mesh so it bends, well, I can go into this side, take it, lay it down, and then while I have it, I can go into the input box and then the channel box editor, which is this one, with that thing highlighted. And I can say curvature. Well, I can up the curvature and I can connect these two forms together. If I do it so, so, so perfect, I can then take it and then merge the edges together even. And you're asking, well, what about the other direction? How do I do that? Well, if I rotate this, and this one is, how about 90 degrees, and put this at zero, I can now go to curvature, and now I can bend it in that direction. What's really hard is getting the point increments down. So let's say, you know, I zoom way in and see how it collapses on to itself. Well, what I can do is over here, I can choose like 3.6. Whoa. So 3.15 does it. Okay, just about. Maybe it's 3.16. There we go. So now I have this very unique looking cog thing that can go in the center of a ray gun or something. Note it's really high res because I started it out really high res. Uh, it doesn't certainly need to be high res. All I did is have to make sure that my first part wasn't so bad. But this is a very cool shape. There's no doubt about it. And you just got to start thinking outside the box a little bit. And that's what I kind of want to illustrate with this video. It's not, 
you know, different modeling techniques. It's the fact that you can you can take one shape and build upon it over and over again. And if this wasn't so high poly, I can do that one more time even. I could duplicate this and then stretch it out and then re re put it together. And then all of a sudden I got this center of a uh, maybe a generator or something like that. Okay. All right, so that is thinking outside the box. And along the way, you also got to learn the Ben tool. All right, so please move on to the next video.